With the release of the Kerbal Space Program 2 1 to the Early Access, I have decided to compare three of the most popular space games that you could be playing today in terms of you have Kerbal Space Program, which is an older contestant but still the reigning champion, you have Kerbal Space Program 2, which is the new contender, and Juno New Origins. So, question is, which one is the best today? Yes, and I have done it in the context of one single mission. Go, design, launch, and land a ship to moon. So first part, we will be talking about building rockets. Yes, and we will be starting with the Kerbal Space Program 1. Kerbal Space Program 1 is the reigning champion going strong for 12 years with a strong modding community. It's basically a physics simulator of building and launching rockets that contain tiny spacemen called Kerbals into the orbit of Kerbin and into the solar system where they can go on and explore and find their own adventures. There are three modes to choose from. Uh, the science mode, which is personally my favorite, which you unlock new nodes via the science. There is the sandbox, which, where you can build pretty much anything. And also there is the career mode, where you get the contracts, which you need to fulfill, and all that jazz, which makes it quite a lot interesting and playable. So within the confines of this mission, I will be, and of this playthrough, I will be looking at some major components. Enjoyability, design, building, flying, how the game performs, how does the game look, and what would be my kind of suggestion to you in terms of which one is the best, and if you haven't got any, which one you should buy. All right. Of course, this is my subjecti subjective and personal opinion. So as you can see in the Kerbal Space Program 1, we are currently building the Moon Lander. So with the Kerbal Space Program 1, I really like the editor. I mean, it, the game has been out for 10 years, or tw actually 12 years, and it's really fleshed out and it feels. The game feels complete, it has pretty much everything, and while you're looking at this, you might realize that I'm actually playing the heavily modded version, because KSP1 has a, a thriving modding community and a gazillion mods, so really, if you want to play it on the PC, this is like almost the definitive experience. By the way, I'm actually here using only the graphical mods, not the part mods, not the, you know, life support mods and all that stuff. And I'm using also the Kerbal Engineer, which gives me a readouts of thrust to weight, delta V, etc. And these are all parameters that tell me my thrust, which will allow me my rocket to either go above the Kerbin to launch and to go into the orbit if the thrust to weight is 1.8, 1 point above 1 and also delta V which is my mileage per gallon so I'm not gonna explain all of the concepts there are lots of tutorials on my uh, YouTube channel you might want to search them out but all in all Kerbal Space Program 2 is the new release. It has been released roughly three to four weeks ago and as of recording this episode we have just gotten the first patch. Uh, one note here, here I'm actually showing a pre-patch version but I will be commenting and there will be snippets of the post-patch uh, comments because the patch has changed everything. At the date time of early access, Kerbal Space Program 2 was, to be honest, a buggy mess. It was a beautiful buggy mess, which I actually enjoyed playing. However, there were a lot of bugs which hampered your playing experience and performance issues and requirements that were literally out of this world. It would require a NASA supercomputer to be able to get the frame rate above 60 FPS on the launch pad. And I know some people who had beefy graphic cards like RTX 4090s that were actually struggling to get 60 FPS uh, at 4K. I mean, I'm actually playing at 1080p, so for me that's not that big of an issue, and I also have 2080 graphics cards. But uh, you will also see the performance meters I have actually when launching it, uh, f f crafts. I have uh, frops running in the top right corner, so you will see the frame count. And note, this is pre-patch. After the patch, the performance has been jacked up by roughly 25%, in some cases even 3 to 4 times, so I will be letting you know with the follow-up video. So, as said, here we are comparing these three games, Kerbal Space Program 1, this is the Kerbal Space Program 2. What I really like about the Kerbal Space Program 2 is ability that you can color your own rockets. 
I personally think that that is amazing because it gives you a sense of, you know, individualism. You can customize your rockets and this planar projection that you can see uh, roughly beside the part counter uh, at the bottom left, you can actually turn your crafts into blueprints so you can actually have it like projected to a 2D plane if you need to align a couple of things. It really makes the whole organizing a little bit more you know fleshed out and concise of course there are some issues still but for the most part they have been addressed by the patch and more patches will be coming for sure where the devs have promised to address still more performance and a lot more bug fixes and you have to take into account this game has been out for three months Okay, so let's talk into terms of designing about the Juno, New Origins. Now, this game has recently gone a change of name. It was known as the Simple Rockets 2. And it was actually a main contender and one of its strengths is that its performance. As you can see by the top right corner, performance counter going on 144, which is my monitor refresh rate, uh, is that it can run up on a potato. Honestly, there is a version of Juno New Origins for the iPhone and uh, Android platforms and I have been testing it on my iPhone XR which is almost like what a seven eight years old phone and it works perfectly I, I gotta tell you it, it works like a charm uh, now Juno New Origins has all, also uh, the a career mode where you get some contracts and you get the technology tree and you get to unlock a lot of nodes as does the Kerbal Space Program. It doesn't have a science game and it also has a sandbox. So from the perspective of building rockets, I gotta tell you, I'm actually not a big fan of uh, Juno because it looks a little bit too simplistic. Uh, it's much more flexible than the Kerbal Space Programs. You have less parts, but they are more configurable. As you can see, there's a lot of sliders that you can change values and parameters for each and every single bit and aspect of your every single part. So it's much more customizable than the Kerbal Space Program 1 or the Kerbal Space Program 2. However, it lacks the character and the soul. I mean, I don't feel like I'm in the VAB assembling craft, you know, with all these effects, sounds, whizzing and stuff. I mean, you could say that I've been spoiled by, spoiled by the Kerbal Space Program 2 and to the degree by Kerbal Space Program 1, but... I think this is uh, building crafts is where Kerbal Space Program 2 shines, despite the fact that currently Kerbal Space Program 2 is more of a bare bones compared to the KSP-1. I will go into the details a little bit afterwards. However, as you can see, you can tweak the size of the engine, which also affects its thrust to weight, its delta V, its uh, practically all the parameters. So Juno is much more customizable powerful version that runs actually better than KSP 1 and 2 combined however in my personal opinion and that's just me it's a little bit more of a bland experience it's like you take the dish that it's perfectly you know technically made but it lacks character it lacks spices it lacks the things that make it you know mm, you want to eat it so Juno is sort of like that, technically perfect, but it lacks soul, if you want to say it, call it that way. Okay, so now let's go to the launching rockets section. I have launched all three in uh, KSP, KSP1 and KSP2. So KSP1, as, as you can see, I'm running heavily modded version with a lot of mods and I'm getting 60 frames per second on ascent on launch. Uh, here I can I will post a mod list in the description of this video. There is environmental visual enhancements, parallax 2.0, volumetric clouds, which are beautiful by Blackrack. I mean, honestly, they look better than the KSP2, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, the, the launching of the craft feels quick, feels responsive. I'm actually showing you two times accelerated just so it, this video doesn't drag on. What I am missing, I am a little bit missing thrust to weight ratings. Of course, you can get them by pulling up stage information. So that's why I'm running with a flight engineer. And that's one of the mods that, uh, I mean, it's a mod from uh, Kerbal Engineer, but all in all, it really feels fleshed out. The one downside of the KSP-1 is that information is spread all over the place. Your timeline is the top left corner, your altitude is up in the middle and center. 
uh, the bottom and the left you have your orbital information, navball I have chosen to move left when in KSP2 it already is in the left corner and more neatly arranged so all in all really fleshed out. When it comes to Kerbal Space Program 2 here I'm a little bit divided. When it comes to graphics it looks more beautiful. I'm actually spoiled by the countdown. I really feel that uh, the rockets are actually feels more personal because of the coloring scheme and UI in terms of launching has some welcoming additions. You will notice by my frame rate, which is pre-patched, that I was getting 40 frame frames per second for a craft that's roughly, I don't know, 50, 60 ish parts. So all in all, not bad, pretty playable, not perfect, obviously. And graphic, I really some things that I love that the Kerbals are actually much more individual and they react to the G-forces that are submitted to. As you can see by Bill and Jebediah Kerman Kerman, they are really seem to be enjoying that. And that gives us this flavor that I've been talking about, this soul, this, you know, mm. uh, By the way, the dragging of the lines, orbital maneuvers, I wasn't a big fan that earlier release, but this was been addressed by the patch as I will be showing a little bit later on the video. All the controls here are grouped at the bottom, middle and the left of your screen. And that's something that I'm really appreciating because I can easily see my whole situation by looking at the bottom and left. So I'm really informed in how much I have to go, what's my epoapsis, periapsis, orbital velocity, ground altitude, controls and whatnot. I'm not a big f control f fan of this burn timer. It shows roughly accurate, but this slider below it, it's not really my thing. Also, this accelerate time accelerator, it's placed in a good way. What I'm missing still is the thrust to weight. And I mean, the Delta V readouts, this has been, like I said, pre patch right now. It has been fixed since then, but it's still missing the thrust to weight information. Right, so with that being said, now let's take a look at the Juno New Origins. Like it's the build mode, the launch platform feels a little bit more, you know, low poly, bland, but it actually looks decent. And the difference between the Kerbal Space Program 1 and 2 and the Juno New Origins has been in the fact that Juno is actually more designed to be working with the touchpad, so like, you know, Android, iPhone and whatnot, because in KSP 1 and 2, you are controlling your rocket's ascent via the WASD, while in the Juno New Origins, you're more likely to turn this according to your mouse wheel. You can still use the WASD, but you are more pointing where the rocket, you want the rocket to go, and the rocket will follow you on ascent. It will be going there where you essentially tell it to. So that's one of the things that I felt like was a little bit, I would call it different. Right. So with that thing being said, Juno New Origins, I'm actually missing a little bit of the skybox. It looks kind of nice. I was missing the clouds a bit, so it, it, it looks decent. Like I said, everything about Juno is technically very well and you can see the flight info and map info. You can actually, it's customizable. You can place wherever you want. So that's something that I certainly do appreciate, but everything has been done in, in this bland menus, which they're good. Don't get me wrong, they're good. But like I said, they lack character. And that's so all this nav ball. I mean, you have the nav ball, but you don't have any more sliders and bells and whistles and, you know, little altitudes that are going and rotating up and down. And so all in all, and that's the theme that I have been more or less throughout the whole Juno New Origins. Technically, it runs perfectly. Frame rate is life, literally. But overall experience feels a little bit, you know, like it's missing something. And uh, yeah, it still looks nice and uh, it's, it's fun to play, I can tell you that much. But KSP 1 and 2 feels better in my opinion. I could be wrong, I could be doing it injustice, but I don't know. I just feels a little bit, I, I feel better playing KSP 1 and 2. Okay, so that being said, it's uh, let us examine 
if you can look at this burn i'm also having hard time figuring out where for example i don't have these sliders that i've been complaining about because i don't know how much do i need to burn to be able to complete my maneuver node actually later on i realize it's under the map info so it's good to it's good to know about that but like i said all information is there but the craft and the graphic looks bland and so and so so now let's talk about orbital maneuvering and transfer all the way to moon or in the future duna mars luna whatever you want to call it now the kerbal space program one has this fleshed out because the game has been out for 12 years and maybe feels like unfair to compare but still we got to take a reference point right so when it comes to ksp1 uh, the prograde, retrograde indicators, navball, everything is done pretty, pretty nicely. And uh, the information is concise, although as I complained a little bit, it's a little bit spread out between the top, your view is spread out between the top and the bottom. Now, when it comes to creating maneuver nodes, they are working pretty well and I'm actually enjoying the view is concise. So I get immediate information, what's going to be my moon periapsis, how it's going to fly, how, how much time it takes me to get there. And uh, I have all the information that I need in my fingertips, include the very handy, you know, zoom or warp to the maneuver node and controls like point maneuver, prograde, retrograde and whatnot. So. Kerbal Space Program, we've been out so long, they really had the chance to perfect this and the game loop is really fun and enjoyable. Needless to say, I mean, it looks like a dream and it's actually pretty performant. I'm getting like 60 to 70 FPS throughout the entire game, so I'm not overall seeing any problems. When it comes to burning and launching the cross, staging never gets old. You get all these sounds that, you know, click sound, click sound, really feels like you're there. Also, the controls are fast and responsive, so if you really want to tweak your maneuver nodes, you can do that. All right, so there you go. And one thing that I'm really enjoying, one of my favorite things in KSP is these transfers. So when you're transferring, you can just marvel, enjoying, take the UI away and enjoy as your craft is coming leaving Kerbin and arriving at Moon, and you can actually plan your maneuver nodes very nicely. I mean, really KSP1 feels like a complete game. And of course, I mean, you will hear me argue this a lot of times. The graphics is a little bit dated, and if you're playing a vanilla version, it doesn't look this beautiful. It looks much, much more bland. And then you really feel the 12 year old age of the Kerbal Space Program 1. So the reason why I'm not discussing the stock Kerbal Space Program 1 is mainly because uh, it has been long enough and uh, out there that you can really get in the mods and it's easy to install the mods via CCAN. So there's nothing that is preventing you, uh, at least the PC players from enjoying it in its best version. Right, when it comes to the console, it's a whole different ball game, but I'm not, here I'm discussing only the PC games because, well, at least KSP2 at the moment is only a PC game, so it would be unfair. Now, maneuver nodes, in, these are the maneuver nodes shown from the early access release. Now, patched, I'm gonna show you just now briefly on the screen right now, so you get a chance to see how do they look and feel, and they feel much better, and the devs have really improved this in this previous patch. So really, really a huge heads off to you devs. They have listened to the community and this patch has significantly improved. Okay, so now let's go back to the gameplay. Now here, the performance, the game of course looks much more, much better in terms of, I mean, graphical overall fidelity. Performance is taking significant hits because the game is still heavily un unoptimized, but that will only get better as we progress. So I have no doubts that the developers will really make it good. Now, marking this apoapsis and periapsis that you're seeing here has been really fixed in the in the, um, in the post-patch version. I'm sorry that I'm showing you a pre-patch version here because this video take a, took a long time to make and I will be showing you if you see a video overlay, that means that I've been showing you roughly snippets from the post-patch version just to see how it was before and after. Once again, controls 
are to a degree responsive. It really feels like an early access. There are some bugs and as you can see, I'm running with Micro Engineer, which is also a mod. Yes, KSP2 has only been out for a couple of weeks. Already there are mods and the modding community is doing their utmost what they can do to help and improve the game because, well, God knows when the game launched, it needed it. So, yeah. However, overall graphics-wise, you can see that the game looks beautiful. A lot of the things that KSP1 at its inception didn't have, KSP2 does have, although the game is much more of a bare-bones experience. I feel like I really have to point out that at the moment KSP2 is only sandbox. So that means you can own, there is no career mode, there is no tech tree, there is no progression, there is nothing like that. You only have your parts and you can go on various adventures. But uh, these things will be added in time and it will take some time. However, the planets look much more beautiful than they do in the KSP1 and they have a lot more, you know, surface features. They're overall a much nicer experience compared to the KSP1 and the lighting and the skybox and these shines that these glares that you get really feel more authentic if you want to call it that way. One thing that I didn't like is that the camera tries to rotate, I don't know, it could be just a feature of the celestial view, but whenever I'm trying to do this transition from moon or anywhere else, I get a feeling that the camera is trying to pan around the ship and I don't want it to pan, I just want to enjoy the view that I have chosen. So, you know, as a content creator you want to be able to have artistic freedom in terms of showing what you want to show. And here I feel like the game is a little bit, you know, twisting my arm. But look at the moon. The moon looks amazing. So, by the way, do let me know in the comments below. Is this just the fault of the celestial view or should I just switch to a different type of view and it would be better? I could be wrong. Alright, maybe it's just this flight view that I have to use. Anyway, as I said, burn timer, I'm not really a big fan of the burn timer. It says when you should start and it says when it should stop according to the patch. Patch has been um, significantly improved, but the moon looks much nicer. So there's that that you have to take into account. And there's a lot of more polygons and details, which of course results in the poor performance. As you can see, according to the fraps, my frames per second are jumping all over the place. They go as high as 90 and they go as low as 18. So, yeah. As said, pre-patch version. Post-patch is a bit more stable and uh, performant. Okay, now, speaking of the maneuver node controller, let us quickly establish and lower our periapsis and then we will be taking a look at Juno and transfer. So, also pre-patch, the problem was that you weren't able to show periapsis and apoapsis while you were dragging them, but there was a mod that fixed this and also in the patch this has been addressed. So now the KSP2 from the perspective of the map view feels uh, more like a KSP1 and it really shows and it really works in pretty good. So all in all, what I can say my conclusions are that after the patch, the game feels much more responsive, much better, and it's overall, it went from be a barely playable to an actually pretty enjoyable experience. I want to make stress that out enough. All right, so when we're looking at the Juno, New Origins, we're going once again back. The moon is called Luna, and all the information that you have are there, similar to KSP1. For me, it's, it takes a little bit of adjustment to figure out what those parameters mean, but as you can tell from the view, it's pretty easy to deduct that you're going to get an orbital insertion, how it's going to look, what's the approach info, so all the information is actually there. You just have to figure out where to find it. And uh, all in all, the game does a very good job of keeping you updated and informed, and uh, when it comes to you know, performance, it's butter smooth, it looks amazing, or actually, it doesn't look amazing, sorry. It's running amazing, but it looks what it looks, yes. I mean, uh, I understand that the goal is that this could run on iOS, but I 
couldn't be left with a feeling that I would really like the PC version, which has a much more oomph to be able to process, to have nicer textures and stuff. I mean, I get the design choice, I'm just not sure if I'm enjoying it that much, to be honest. All right. So with that being said, we are going from Drew to Luna. And as you can say, transition wise, it's nice. It looks good. It's nothing to write home about. Now I could be unfair to the game. Do let me know in the comments below. If, if there are any dedicated Juno players, uh, do let me know. I could be very wrong. I didn't play it that much. I played it for, let's say, 12 to 20 hours when at KSP1 I have over 7,000 hours logged. So from that perspective, <laughs> I'm, I could be biased. Yeah, that's also needs to be said. But mm, I, I didn't mind and I actually enjoyed to a degree playing with Luna when my KSP2 was running at 7 frames per second on the takeoff of my Duna launcher. Yeah, so it came as a good, how would you say, you know, healing patch or, yeah, band-aid. Yeah, let's call it a band-aid. All right, so the burn is done. We have performed our orbital insertion. And once we are done with that, we can lock velocity retrograde and do some final corrections just to make sure that we don't run into Luna. Right. Also, I felt a little bit that I was out of whack in terms of the controls for the uh, Juno. The Juno does have a tech tree and I tried playing career. I spent, like I said, roughly 10 hours playing it. And what I really liked about Juno's career is that the guy who is giving you, welcoming you and onboarding you feels like a combination where, where you have Elon Musk's face with Jeff Bezos haircut uh, combined with Lex Luthor delivery of messages and all that jazz. So let's get into the main part, which is the landing. I mean, when you're going there where you're landing places, this is the part that you really enjoy the most. Getting to different places, getting there, landing, exploring. So the game needs to give you reasons to explore. And we are back in the Kerbal Space Program 1, which as always has been the reigning champion. Uh, uh, in KSP-1, usually the planets are spheres, which are so-and-so, you know, okay. They have some surface feature, they look decent. However, when you install the mods, that's they, when they really start to shine. Then they really look beautiful, as you will be able to tell by my, you know, parallax configuration 2.0. I cannot state this enough, it just looks gorgeous. Oh, look, there's a Monarch. Uh, guys, I honestly didn't plan to land beside the surface feature of the Monarch, but uh, yeah, we're not gonna be visiting it. I'm just planning a retrograde burn to kill off any vertical veloc horizontal velocity I have, and then I will be landing like flat out downwards. All right, and my plan is to basically just go straight down. As you can tell, my craft is responsive. I'm getting roughly 80 frames per second, despite of uh, heavily modded terrain, lots of details and whatnot. All right, so let us go. And at this point, I, I will actually stage and get rid of my tank before I decrease my velocity. There we go. Okay, stage, get rid of it and enable my poodle engines and then I will be taking down the landing legs. My tank will, with the engine will be litho braking, giving me a rough idea what the height is. And of course, uh, I have all the information at my fingertips and it really feels responsive. And look at these tiny rocks and pebbles on the moon, courtesy of Parallax mod and it really looks beautiful. I cannot state this enough. All right, so uh, the information panels that you see on the top, uh, apoapsis height, altitude terrain, those are the courtesy of a mod, Kerbal Engineer. I'm sure that KSP2 will have some similar features. And as you can tell by the look of here, it really looks amazing. You can, of course, take your Kerbals, go out, plant a flag and whatnot, and there's the R master extraordinaire Jebediah Kerman going out and these rocks actually have the collision meshes so a big kudos to our mod maker there we go I think it's Lynx who have created the, the Parallax 2.0 mod guys correct me in the comments if I'm wrong so a big shout out to him 
and I'm really excited to see what KSP2 mods will be out there. See? And the Jebediah is dancing, he is really happy. However, his facial expression and stuff, it's a little bit, you know, semi bland. However, when you compare that to the KSP2, well, that's a much more cleaner experience. Okay, so KSP1 looks good, runs great, standard thing. Now, let's go and talk about Kerbal Space Program 2. That one is actually still a little bit of early access. However, let us see. You have to note that this moon is KSP stock. So there are no mods that are making it nicer and more beautiful. So if you really want to compare, you should compare it to the stock. So, and that's obviously not a really fair comparison. However, okay, so going there, let us go and descend roughly downwards. We need to just make sure that we are aligned nicely. By the way, I'm playing at 1080p at the medium details, just to make sure. Look at this, Bill and Jebediah. Kerman Kerman are actually, by the way, this Jebediah Kerman is not the real Jebediah. I've just created a Kerbal called Jebediah Kerman, so that's why the glasses and everything. Oh, look at this. When I press the thrust, they lean forward, and when I stop the thrust, they stop leaning. These things add immersion, they add character, they add soul, so it really feels like, you know, a KSP game. It feels like you have two small Kerbanauts that are really being affected by all your forces, which makes you more invested into their flight, so to say. Okay, there are still, still some teething problems, like the information, for example, I'm here missing the information of when it will be my impact time, what is my thrust to weight, I mean, I'm getting this from the micro engineer, which is of course the mod, and uh, when I will be impacting and how much, you know, seconds of burning I have with me. So those are the information that I would really like to have. But all in all, the game looks pretty beautiful, stock. There are, since I've been playing at the medium scale, there. this is not the best that the moon can look. However, the craft and the lighting, I feel it's amazing. I really cannot stress this enough. And also each planet has its own soundtrack and music and the sound design of KSP2 guys is phenomenal. I cannot stress this enough. The game sounds amazing. So the sounds of the KSP2 make me want to go places, want to explore. They get me all pumped up for the mission that I'm about to undertake. So environment wise and you know, motivation wise, I would say KSP2 really is the king. When it comes to performance, you can see that my performance is dancing all over the place. Currently it says 40 because it's really low part count, so might not be a fair comparison, some would say. But I really wanted to get those compared. Also, apparently with the EA version, I had the problems with my uh, anti-aliasing for some reason, I don't know why. But uh, in the patch, this has been fixed and now uh, is my anti-aliasing when I'm running in window mode looks okay. Here you have these rockets and service features from in stock. So yeah, <laughs> I've posted here decent FPS because at the time when I was playing it, I was running pre-patch. Look at the guy, he's so happy and he is really, I put up a screenshot. Of course he had to scratch his butt and th these are these tiny things that I'm talking about which really make you enjoy KSP2, these moments. Look at him, idle animations. Those are little things that do so much for the game, overall look and feel. Now, let's talk once again, Juno New Origins. And we are talking about the landing. Of course, we are preparing for the land. We are making sure that we are decreasing our orbital velocity. Luna is above and looking nice. We're just making sure that our Periapsis is roughly, I would say, below. So yeah, there we go. We are progressing towards the crater and we will be soon performing the lander. So I think it's time that we start wrapping up in terms of uh, my opinions. So if you want to say gameplay, I would say that KSP1 here is the king because it has most game modes, the game has been out. It's a fully fleshed out experience. Game is mature, fun and consistent. You have campaign, science and sandbox, can be enhanced by a lot of mods. 
If we are talking about KSP2 from the gameplay perspective, I would say right now I would give it a 6, I would give KSP1 a 9 out of 10 for the gameplay. KSP2 I would give 6 out of 10 because 8 out of 10 when the bugs are fixed at its current uh, state. It has less things than KSP2, some great concepts, trip planner, VAB, countdown, action groups for solar, wheels, lights are great, it but you have to into take into account that it just launched into early access and uh, it feels like a KSP game, gameplay is decent, it has been obstructed by bugs but those have been resolved since then, some of them, and it has lots of missing features but I'm confident the devs will add it. When we come to Juno, I would give this one a 6 out of 10, because it's technically fully correct, but it's and it's similar to KSP, but it, the gameplay is, as you can see, it's a little bit bland. It lacks soul, it lacks something. Graphics-wise, if we're talking, I would give KSP stock 6 out of 10, because it really feels the signs of age modded that I have shown I would give it an 8 out of 10 because it really looks beautiful and it's 12 year old game and there it showed signs of aging if you're playing stock because stock has outdated graphics, faceless planets, missing surface features. Modded, it can be made to look beautiful, parallax to mod, blend planet, planetary surface and volumetric clouds fixes atmospheres, waterfall fixes exhausts. Mods make the game relevant and beautiful today and rivaling even the KSP2. KSP2 graphics wise looks beautiful, I would give it a 9 out of 10. Rockets are shiny, reflections, ambient light, painting rockets brings new life and the planets look much better than KSP1. Lighting and scattering is amazing, you can really tell the difference between the bodies that have atmospheres and the ones that don't. Exhausts are nice, but not amazing, and some of them have cool effects. Kerbal have much more expressive and fun. Juno, I would give it 6 out of 10 because it looks decent, it's okay, but it's nothing to write home about. Uh, screens are helpful, information is there, but it, it's rocket feels generic and uninteresting. Performance-wise, KSP1 is going strong. KSP2 is a performance hog, it feels a little bit... Ooh, but it has been going better and it's only going to get better from here. Uh, so the overall expressions after playing this mission to moon, my suggestion is right now the best game is KSP1. However, KSP2 is quickly closing the distance, is getting much better. And I have no doubt that after a couple of patches, my recommendation will be KSP2. However, at this date, today, I'm still recommending KSP1 if you're just starting out and you will want a full flesh experience, but if you're a diehard fan, check out KSP2. With that being said, thanks for watching!